Hello, my name is Rachel Anderson. I am the ELA Team 7 English teacher. And I just want to walk you through Google Classroom since it is such a big part of the ELA Classroom um, and show you a couple things that um, kids can use as a reference and some ways that they can check their work. So um, I've gotten to the, uh, the Google Classroom home and I've used my daughter's account to add her to my classroom. So you can see that all of the classes your child is a part of should show up on this um, homepage. And um, I'm gonna click on ELA 7, which is, uh, this is an example of the cohort 23 Google Classroom page, but they are all very similar. When you click on it, it takes you to the stream and um, the kids on their iPad have these choices at the bottom on a, on a desk or on a laptop, it comes up on the top, but when they're on the iPad view, it comes up on the bottom. So they'll be looking down here for those, but they do the same things. So in the stream, um, I use the stream to just post some announcements and some things that will help them. Um, when they are virtual, this happens to be a Tuesday, Thursday cohort. When they are virtual on Mondays and Wednesdays, they can click on this slide and um, teachers update it to show them what their to-do list is and what their assignments are for the day so they can check there. Um, I've given them some reference. There's a video here of uh, literature terms and a, a review of what those uh, literature terms are. There's a cute little song that they can listen to if they're struggling. And then there's also a PowerPoint note section that they can just read real quick to refresh. Um, we are in the middle of our first module unit, which is a long walk to water. Um, if they click on these, I have posted the essential questions for our unit. Um, we're talking about how culture and time and place uh, affects the way that the characters identify um, and develop their identity. So that is posted there. And if I can get back there. And next to that, I've also posted a PDF of the text because every student has a novel or should have a novel and they should have it with them at all times. It should come home with them. It should come back to school with them. So they should always have access to it. However, if they don't happen to have it with them and they need it, or they um, prefer to read on the iPad, that PDF is always there. Um, and I've always been posting the audios for them, uh, the chapters as well, so they can listen to it. They can read it on their iPad or they can read it in their book. Um, ideally, if they're listening to it, they're following along with one of those text pieces as well, um, but they have options to do that. And as long as they are reading, I don't really care which method they choose as long as it's working. So we're about halfway through our unit. So I've also posted quick little summaries of each of the chapters. Some kids are behind and some kids just like the refresher. Um, and all of those chapters we've read so far are listed here with a quick little paragraph summary of each of them. So if they ever needed to use that as a uh, reference, they have that there as well. Okay. I also post announcements and, and other quick things that they need to know in their stream. The classwork tab is where they uh, spend most of their time. I organize their, whoop, I organize their classroom uh, by weeks. Um, September, I kind of grouped all together. So a lot of their owed work from power school would most likely be found down here. And then anything else assigned by the weekly title should be found um, underneath them. So um, we're just starting the week of the 26th. So they should be able to see today's assignment and then go back and work on anything that they uh, have not done yet. Okay. The third tab here is the people tab. If they ever, they really don't need to access the kids as much, but if they ever needed to email me, if they go to people and they click on that, they can access my uh, email right from Google Classroom and they don't have to type it in or do anything else except click on that and then they're able to get a hold of me. So it's a really quick way to do that as well. Okay. Um, many of the kids are um, pretty good at checking their to do list. Okay. Um, so when they get to their to-do list, again, these things are at the bottom of their iPad. Um, this will show them everything that they are assigned for this week with all their classes that they are a member of. Um, a lot of times kids forget to open these arrow tabs 
to open up everything because it kind of condenses it and just shows you the first couple. And then if you open it up, it shows you all of your classes and, and what you owe or what's been assigned to you in this column, I'm sorry. If you go to missing, the same thing happens. It, it arranges it by week and kids need to open up these tabs. And even as they get down here, there's a view all, you need to click it open and they can see everything that they, um, they owe, all right? Um, the done tab is what they should have completed and turned in and ideally it's come back with a grade. Um, again, these arrows need to be opened up. Um, when they see things that are graded, um, my daughter has not turned in much of her work, but when they see things that are graded that have uh, a zero, they need to click on it. So if they click on it, it tells them what it is. Well, she turned this one in blank and it wasn't done or it just didn't upload right and they need to resubmit it to get a grade. Um, kids should be checking the graded column. Once they turn in something, even if they turn it in blank and they've never touched it, it will never go back to the to-do list. It will always stay in the graded. So they have to open up. Um, they can even open it up here and you can see that your results are not in the Google form. So you didn't complete the assignment. You just hit turn in. So it makes it disappear from your to-do list, but it doesn't show you, um, it doesn't give you any credit because you haven't done it yet. Okay. And then if um, they have turned in and they know that they've completed the assignment, it is um, here under turn in. And as long as they know that they've done it and they haven't just hit turn in, that means it's waiting for a grade. If you're concerned, you can have your child open it and they can show you the work. Okay. Um, so a lot of kids are, um, are struggling with this section, this done section. Because now, um, in order to get credit for this, you have to look at the assignment title and the date. And if you go back to ELA, the classwork, I'm gonna find that date, okay? Um, and they should be pretty close. Um, this assignment, I actually did a little bit out of order for my two cohorts, so it wasn't the best example, but they need to find the title of the assignment and go back and to do the assignment, um, she can unsubmit it and complete it to turn it back in. Or if it's returned to them, they should be able to just complete it. Okay. Um, so that was just a brief little summary. Most kids are pretty savvy at Google Classroom and they've done and are doing really well with it. Um, most of our work is organized in here. This is our communication device and this is the best way to um, keep track of their work as it goes. You can see here that there's also a, a work in progress tab to be there as well on the side, okay? So I look forward to meeting you all someday. And I hope that your student is enjoying ELA. And um, if you need anything, please reach out, please email me, please um, encourage your kids to do the same. Thank you.